A while back, I offhandedly mentioned that I had run a lottery fundraiser to raise some money for my son's high school class and pay for after prom and a senior celebration. And and I had asked if y'all would be interested in hearing like a full out explanation of the like whole process. And several of you indicated that yes, you did want to hear about this. So that is what we are going to be talking about in today's video. Now, I have only run this type of fundraiser one time, but I first got the idea for it because I was, like I said, looking for ways to raise money for my son's senior class. And the parents had not really been answering the calls that I'd put putting out for either help or to donate. It was kind of a frustrating process. And so I reached out to one of my uh, PTO friends, and I hate to call her an old friend because she is very, she's young, but she, her kids are grown and actually, I think, all flown at this point, uh, even from college. And so she had said, oh, we use this fundraiser with massive success. Like I, they had done it very manually where they had like tickets printed it with each of the number combinations. I uh, didn't have time for that and I didn't want to mess around with that. And I knew I didn't have that many people to help me with this fundraiser. And so I knew that having a digital, like an online fundraiser for this type of moneymaker was the, really the only way to go. And so that's how I went about it. So let's talk about the specifics. So a lottery fundraiser is based on your state's lottery system. So what I live in Ohio, so we have a pick three and I think a pick four. I don't actually play the lottery ever. Uh, but um, So your state might have something different. Uh, but the the way that this the way that we were able to have a raffle is that in Ohio, non 501c3 nonprofits are allowed to have fundraise or allowed to have raffle fundraisers, right? So first, that's the first thing you want to check because you need to be legal with your state's like gaming laws, I guess, or your nonprofit laws or whatever. So you're going to just have to Google like, can a nonprofit have a raffle fundraiser in the state of X? And like, that is how I think you should search for that. And it'll probably turn up the information you're looking for. But I happen to know that Ohio 501c3s, which my organization is, can run raffle fundraisers. And so even though this lottery or this fundraiser rather is based on the lottery, it's not a lottery fundraiser. So it's not really the same thing because they're just buying a raffle ticket. So it's closer to a raffle. Anyway, so you want to pick a month. Like once you figured out that you can that you can legally do this sort of fundraiser, then you need to pick a month, ideally one with more days, right? Because it's going to give more opportunities to win. Like if you pick February, there's only 28 days normally, unless it's a leap year, uh, to win. But if you pick March, there's 31 days, right? You want to pick which drawing you're going to use like f- to determine the winners. And so the key, the, the nice thing about this is that you're not actually picking the winners. You're just taking the work of your state's lottery commission and taking their hard work and their publications to kind of determine your winners. So you're going to pick like prizes. So what we did was you could win, I think it was like $25 if you won Monday through Thursday, and then $50 $50 if you won on a Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday, maybe like 75 something like that. So those are just arbitrary numbers, but you want to give people like a nice return on their investment or their, not, it's not really investment, it is kind of, but in their, um, you want to give them something for their money. So once you've pick the prizes, then you want to set your ticket amounts. So we did one for one one set of numbers for $5 or I think five for 50 or six for 50. No, that doesn't work out the math. I think we had three levels. Anyway, you can figure it out. So you want to like, of course, make the tickets cheaper if they get more chances, right? But don't make them so cheap that it dilutes things because people will really give 
more than you probably think they will. So I think $5 is a good starting number, but from there you wanna go to at least like 12 or 15 and then from there to 50 because the grandma and the grandpas who want to support their kiddos their grandbabies will give the higher amounts and some people just want to give more so don't don't lean into that opportunity to kind of cheap out and like have everything just be five dollars it'll take you forever and a day to raise money and it just won't be as much as you could raise if you have those higher dollar amount ticket opportunities you have your month then how this works is that they win if their number is drawn at the drawing that you're using. So we use the Ohio Pick 3 evening drawing. So our state actually has an afternoon drawing. I think it's like noon or something. Anyway, they have two Pick 3s a day. So you want to really be specific about which drawing you're using because some people be like, well, I totally won. And you're like, well, that was for the afternoon drawing and not the evening drawing. So you need to be clear about that and put that in the rules too. The other really nice thing about this sort of fundraiser is that because you're not shipping anything more than a check, you can have people enter from all over. And that is exactly what ended up happening with the fundraiser that I ran. Like I said, we're in Ohio, but I had family and friends from as far away as Washington State actually participate because they wanted to support my kiddo and they wanted to support me. And so they bought tickets and I was so, it was just so lovely to get their support all the way from across the country. So really, and I didn't expect them to, I just kind of, you know, set up the fundraiser and then shared it online, said, hey, we're doing this for my kiddo's class and saw the ticket sales come in. And I was like, it just warmed my heart. It was just really lovely. So anyways, This is a great one because you're not shipping like raffle baskets. They just don't have to be in town. So this is why this fundraiser can work really well because you have, um, I don't know how many chances there are, but for as many combinations of three digit numbers there are. So from zero to 999, right? Like all of those combinations, that's a whole lot of potential. And so how we did it initially to avoid people choosing the same numbers and having the winnings like diluted. Because at first, that's how we had it set up that I was like, just pick your numbers. And if you happen to pick the same numbers that hit on a certain day, then uh, you'll just split the winnings. And I got feedback from another senior parent whose family members are like, big into picking numbers. And they're like, no, we just they just didn't really like that idea. They're okay with it, but can we tweak it? So what I quickly set up, and this was a really low-tech solution to this, I just created a public Google Doc, and every time someone chose numbers, like I would check two times a day, I would check first thing in the morning, and then at the evening, I would go ahead and add the numbers that the people had chosen at when they purchased their tickets, because we just used a form. Um, so on our fundraising platform, it just had the whole description of the fundraiser, how it worked, that if they're, they, they would choose a three-digit number, and if their number was chosen by the Ohio Lottery Commission for the evening pick three number, then they, on that, de- on, actually, throughout the month, if they got picked any, any, t- any time, because numbers can come up more than once, right? That totally happens. It's rare, but it happens that they could win more than once, so they, that they would get the prize winning per the, you know, day of $25 if it's Monday through Thursday, and then the higher amounts for the weekends. We did the higher amounts just to make it more fun. Like the parents who were helping me organize this just thought that would be extra fun and extra motivational for people to go ahead and buy tickets. I had all those rules in, like on the fundraising page where they could buy the tickets and had a form where they could put in their chosen numbers. And then I would just go ahead and add them to a Google Doc. And so I just put the numbers in sequentially, right? So if someone wanted 367 and then 393, you know, of course, I just put them in um, numerical order. And it did, it was a little more manual work that way. But then I added the link to the Google Doc in on the fundraising page so people could see what numbers were already chosen. And once we instituted this kind of new way of doing things, I think only one person went ahead and chose someone's someone else's numbers or someone's numbers that had already been chosen. They probably just weren't paying attention. But it worked out really, really well, and I didn't get any negative feedback about it. They thought it was great. So when I do this again in 
two years <laughs> when my when my other kiddo is a senior and we're looking to raise money for the senior class. I'm going to use the same system because it worked really, really well. So then the next step is that you're just selling tickets all leading up to the month and you can continue to sell tech tickets throughout the month because their numbers could hit at any time, right? It just depends on what the lottery commission kind of, you know, what happens in that daily draw. You do not need to check who's winning on a daily basis. So if you set up in your rules that the payouts are going to happen at the end of the month, like after the month is concluded, then that is the easiest thing to do by far. Like you do not have to go back through each day's results. Ohio actually has it where you can download a spreadsheet of all of the winning numbers, which made it super simple because then I just scanned that Google Doc that had all of the numbers and I just went through and checked each day against that, against the other spreadsheet. So I was just comparing two spreadsheets. I did it manually. I triple checked it. I asked the other parents that were helping me, because you know I'm numbers challenged. So I asked the other parents who were helping me to kind of go back and check as well. And in the end, well, we didn't, first of all, we did not have that many parents and families participating. So that was kind of a bummer. But we did end up making like $1,200 from the very few that did participate, which was surprising because it was a very low interest level. And again, I don't, I think this type of fundraiser has like phenomenal potential. I just think we had like kind of a group of parents because their kids were all freshmen when the pandemic hit. And I really do think that negatively impacted things. Like I think things are going to be so different for my youngest class just because the level of parent involvement is so much higher already than it was for my other kiddo. So I really think that's going to make a difference. So just because I had mediocre results and it actually ended up being like hmm, maybe 15% of our budget, So it wasn't nothing, right? It could have been more, but it wasn't nothing. So we only had like maybe four winners the entire time. So I think our total cost, because if you do it virtually, you're not paying for the tickets to be printed. You don't have the hassle of tickets not being returned. Like you know instantly if they're buying the tickets online, you know instantly how much money you're going to make or have the potential to make. And then you just have to wait throughout the month to see how many winners there are. Um, And it ended up being really simple. So the other cost involved is going to be if you have a lot of winners, then you're going to need to write more checks from your PTO funds, of course. So maybe I would just expense that out to that fundraiser, like put it under the expenses. You can get business checks from Costco really inexpensively. I don't know if you need to be a member to get those rates or not. Anyway, that's just like another side tip to help you bring down the cost for this fundraiser and your PTO overall. So you're really just mailing out the checks or dropping them off. I think in my case, we just had to mail like one. Everybody else was like we would see. <laughs> they were other parents or whatever. Um, so they were coming to meetings and so we could just hand them a check. So it ended up being super, super profitable. I was a little nervous there because if if because of the relatively low number of tickets that we sold, if we had had winners like every single day, I think we would have still made like $200. But I was hoping to make a lot more. And again, I think in the end we netted out to about a thousand or maybe 1200. I forget, somewhere around there. Um, But it was just a really, really good fundraiser. The other thing that you might want to do to drive ticket sales is to provide an incentive for the students who are going to be pushing the ticket sales. What we did is that we had extra graduation tickets offered. And this was a fantastic incentive for my family alone, because each each student only got so many tickets. Our graduation is actually held at the in the school gymnasium. And so there's a finite number of people who can fit there. And so my mom really, really, really wanted to come to graduation. And so she was like, well, I'll just buy tickets like through the, the fundraiser, because how we structured it was for every 10 tickets that a student sold or referred, because we also in the form field just had a space for the student referrer name, that they would earn one entry into a separate drawing that was just based on chance, right, for the extra graduation tickets. And so for the people who qualified, who for the students who sold tickets, 
both of the family, so it was my family and another family, really needed and wanted those extra tickets. So it was a huge motivator. So if you are doing this for something other than a graduating senior class where you don't have that as an incentive, just come up with something that's similar in their want, something that really is going to grab their attention and really speak to them. It could be that you just give a cash prize to the top seller, right? Just say they'll win $50 or they'll win $100. Some kids are really motivated by different things. So you have to maybe take a poll and say, ask the kids, like, what would you most want to win? It'll be well worth it because this is such a low overhead sort of fundraiser. I mean, the odds of with all of the tickets, unless you sell it all of the numbers, right? That's the only way that you're going to have a lot of expenses. And even then, the ticket sales will outweigh the potential costs for the prizes. So I think you're still going to be fine, but it's just something to take into consideration. But I I hope that you will give this fundraiser a try because like I said, it was really easy And even though I was annoyed by the low participation last year, I think it can be a really good one for another set of, uh, like a different circumstance. Highly encourage you to try it. I love that there is no running around putting together raffle baskets. I like to do that, but that is a lot of work. So this is just a slight variation on a theme for a raffle fundraiser that is kind of wearing the lottery's uh, clothes, kind of. It's disguised just a little bit. And so it can be just a fun variation on a theme that you can use to make a ton of money for your group. So thanks so much for tuning in for this video. And I hope that you will join me for the Want next Want even one. more guidance on how to be a stronger leader so you can run a better PTO or PTA? All of these resources and more are waiting for you at ptoanswers.com.